Hi, what time is it? It's myth-busting time. Yes, cordless anti-static wristbands. None of this rubbish. What do you want one of these annoying uh, anti-static wristband cords for? Screw that. You can buy these on eBay for a buck. They're cordless. They're supposed to work. <laughs> can you smell what I smell? Yeah, bullshit. Thank you to the anonymous mailbag person who spent a whole dollar and sent this into the mailbag because you can really buy these on eBay for a dollar delivered from China. And rather than just go, oh, they're obviously bullshit. There's no way in hell these things can work without dissipating the charge down to ground, just like your regular cord-based systems here plugged into your ESD uh, point down here. They're obviously bullshit, right? Anyone with any engineering knowledge knows this, but hey, let's do it the scientific way. Let's put it to the test, get some quantitative measurements here, and see whether or not these things are bullshit. Behold, the cordless anti-static wrist strap. Looks just like a real wrist strap, like these uh, two here, but it hasn't got the proper uh, stud, either the small one or the larger stud here, to come along and press your... Uh, caught into like this? Oh no sorry, Bob, it's got some wireless magic voodoo inside here Ooh, that dissipates all the static charge into the ether. <coughs> so unlike your regular anti-static wrist straps which have no internal resistance, they just connect directly through to the stud on the uh, top there, your one meg safety discharge resistor is done inside the lead here and also an extra one uh, sometimes inside your uh, the point that you're actually mounted to. But this thing actually has it built in. Well, because you can't just have nothing built in, can you? There it is. It's got a one meg resistor built inside here, plus all the voodoo magic. Now we'll do a tear down at the end of this, but inside here you can see that looks like the leg of the resistor in there, so that just makes contact and this just folds over like that. So we'll see what's inside here later, but yeah, this is just designed to be worn on the wrist like that. That's it. And it's supposed to be as effective as a regular anti-static wrist strap. And to get some quantitative measurements here, I've got the exact tool for the job. This is my Alpha Labs uh, Surface DC voltmeter. It's designed to measure surface charge, ESD charges on mats and things like that, or other uh, objects, uh, without actually uh, touching it. So we can actually use this stainless steel SMD stencil here. It's just a convenient conductive uh, surface, and we can measure the charge on this. We can put a charge on this mat, we can watch it discharge, and we can actually get a real quantitative value in kilovolts. Um, this thing goes up to 20 kilovolts, I think it is, or more, and we can actually get a direct readout in voltage of any sort of charge that we either build up or we uh, discharge from this supposed wrist strap. And just to show you my setup here, I've got the ground of the Surface DC voltmeter going down to my ESD mat here. I'm just using that as a uh, reference surface down here. I've got my Keithley uh, 240 high voltage uh, power supply. It can go up to 1200 volts. I've also got the negative of that reference down to the mat here. So by connecting this metal surface here to the output of the power supply, we can use this to actually calibrate our system and show that it's working. I'm just doing that for a bit of fun. We could just trust this, but hey, why trust it? Let's actually try and do a little bit of calibration first before we do it but then we can uh, use this lead to actually um, discharge I can charge myself up touch it charge the sheet and we can once again use this to just discharge to my uh, earth mains earth referenced uh, ESD strap down uh, ESD bonding point down here now sorry it's not particularly easy to get both of these in shot because this has to be exactly level with the uh, surface down here exactly one inch above that's where it's actually uh, calibrated it's got a little disc on the bottom it's calibrated for that distance anyway what we can do is we can take this we can plug it into our uh, output here and I can reset this so we're at uh, zero volts there and I can actually turn this on up to 100 volts, bingo! Look, 101 volts, and we can go all the way up to 1,000 volts. It's a little bit out, you know, if I actually move this up and down, like just the tiniest amount, it'll uh, change. But you can see that that is perfect. And we can actually, look, we can go 500, and then we can go 
negative as well, and it shows negative charge too. No problems whatsoever. Systems all calibrated, ready to go. All right, let's give this a go. Now, this isn't going to be the world's greatest test today because I don't have synthetic underwear or clothing on or anything like that. I do have a jumper on, but, you know, like we're not going to be able to generate tens of kilovolts. But it doesn't matter. If we can generate uh, charge, static charge, build up a charge on that plate, we can check to see whether or not this cordless wrist strap dissipates any faster than your regular corded wrist strap. So what I've got here is one of my real uh, corded wrist straps, but I'm not gonna connect it through to my earth bonding point. This is to actually connect via this alligator clip lead here through to the charge plate. So that charge plate will be at the same value as me because it's not dissipating anywhere. It's just connected via this direct connection here. So if I Look, you can see I've got a second camera here set up on the Surface DC voltmeter. You can see I can build up a charge there and it slowly dissipates because of natural dissipation and shoes and, and natural dissipation of the system. That's no problems at all. So I can, let's go, I can like give it a little charge, okay? So it charged up the plate and I can actually zero that out by, boom, connecting uh, the plate and hence my body through to uh, directly onto the earth bonding point down there. And as you see, it went down to zero. Now, first we'll try my real anti-static wrist strap. Here we go. I've got it uh, not connected to anything. So once again, I can build up a charge on that plate. Okay. And it stays there and it just naturally dissipates a little bit. But here we go. I'll plug it in and bam, it goes straight down to zero because it's a, it's a one meg resistor. It dissipates the charge really quickly from my body. No problems whatsoever. Now let's do the exact same thing again with our woo strap here. Patent pending. Okay. And I'll turn it around like that. So it's on the bare part of my skin like that. So people can't claim, oh, you've got hairy skin and all that, you know, sort of stuff. And right. So here we go. We're going to do exactly the same thing we did before. And let's see. Hmm. Wah, 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 wah. It's just doing its natural dissipation. That's as part of the system. This thing is not accelerating that discharge at all. Now I could, you know, get the stopwatch out and time it and everything, and I, uh, who cares? Look, it's not doing anything. The charge remains on my body. It's remaining on that plate. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, a thousand volts, 500 volts like this, or whether it's 10 or 20 kilovolts, this thing does nothing. Wah. And let's do a side-by-side -side comparison test. I've got both the woo strap and the real strap on my arm. Here we go. Let's, oh, sorry, I didn't put that back on properly. Here we go. Charge up our plate. No problems at all. It's pretty slow to dissipate, isn't it? There we go. But of course, we can go like that and wham. As soon as I plug in the real strap, it dissipates. I just realized you may not have been able to see much of what I was doing there with that uh, real strap. There we go. I just had that uh, hooked onto there, hooked onto the plate. That's it. So that my body was definitely connected through to the plate and it wasn't dissipating anywhere else. All right. I know some people will complain. I'll try and generate a bit more higher voltage, but I've been experimenting here. Haven't had much luck at all. I've actually got my uh, synthetic uh, walking pants on, synthetic polyester shirt, and I've tried all sorts of various shoes and my jumper taken off and on. And this is about the best I can get. Here we go. I can start it from zero there. And here we go. I've got no wrist strap at all. And, you know, I can get like two and a half thousand or something like that and slowly dissipates. I've actually changed the mount on here. I had the Art of Electronics book before. I've actually just propped it up with some batteries. So it, it discharges slower now, but you know, that's pretty much the best I can get. Sorry. So we'll just try that again. Here we go. Got the good anti-static wrist strap. And bam, there we go. Discharges. And I've got the woo strap on. Here we go. Once again, we're down to zero there. Charger up. Ta-da! And it's not doing anything. It's just the regular discharge rate. Eh, hopeless. So this thing is an absolute crock. So let's take a look what's inside this. My bet is it's just a one meg resistor flapping around in the breeze. Here we go. Let's have a look. Ta-da! Look at that! Look at that! There's our 
one meg resistor in there and that's it wow unbelievable it's actually broken off there it's yeah that just fell off so I had to, oh, oh did i have a faulty one i doubt it <clears throat> and that's it all they've got is that nut there there we've got a captive nut to hold the plate in and that's it it's just a screw attached to a resistor flapping in the breeze that's it that's it that's the whole thing it's an absolute con huh. no real surprise so there you have it there is the cordless anti-static wrist strap it is a complete con it is just a one meg resistor flapping around in the breeze and as you saw it didn't work. Of course it didn't work. Anyone with any <laughs> clue whatsoever about how static charge and discharge works knows knew that this thing wasn't going to work. But, oh, you know, people go, oh, it's only a dollar. I'll just get it on eBay. It's not even worth the one freaking dollar. It is useless. So there you have it. That is totally busted. If you want to discuss it, EEV blog forum link is down below. Catch you next time. Oh. By the way, yes, the rumor is true. I do actually work in the lab in bare feet pretty much all of the time. And, well, here's one reason why. Not that I think it's the most comfortable thing, but hey, this is a nice side benefit. Check it out. Here we go. This is with, this is with shoes on. There we go. Take the shoes off. Ta-da. Let's ground it in and look at that. Not even generating close, barely, not even getting to 100 volts. Beauty. So, nothing wrong with bare feet in the lab. Unless you like step on an upturned IC and then, ouch! Catch you next time.